Hey guys, on today's episode, we're gonna show you how to diagnose ignition faults on the Classic Mini. So you may have seen recently, we took this car ice racing uh, up in Whistler, and unfortunately we had an ignition fault and the car was stranded, we had to tow it back. We posted a video, link down here, and um, we had a couple comments on the video, people asking uh, exactly how I diagnosed it. One person in uh, particular, Justin Handy, asked if we could do a full video on how to diagnose an ignition problem, so that's what we're gonna do for you today. So let's say your car's not starting, and you've gone through and you've made sure that the engine didn't have some catastrophic failure, nothing's broken, uh, and then you made sure that fuel is getting to the engine. Uh, if it's a carburetor, you wanna make sure it's getting to the carb. Uh, if it's um, fuel injected, you wanna make sure that it's getting to the uh, injectors. You can usually tell this just by smelling it. If uh, out the tailpipe it's cranking and it smells like gas, uh, but it's not firing up, it's most likely the ignition system. Now, what we're gonna to do to test for the ignition system, very simple, you can do this roadside, just uh, as I did in the video. Uh, the first step is to make sure that you're getting spark to the spark plugs. Now what we can do is we'll just take a screwdriver or anything kind of metal that you have on hand and you're gonna pull one of the ignition leads off. And then what you wanna do is take the screwdriver and stick it into the back of the plug here so that it's making a connection with the cable. And then holding the screwdriver just off of something that's grounded, particularly uh, in this case it's gonna be an engine stud. We're gonna hold this just a couple millimeters off and then you'll get someone to crank the engine. And what this is gonna do is the spark, if it is sparking, is gonna go through the lead, through the screwdriver and uh, ground onto one of these uh, engine studs or wherever you're grounding the, uh, the, the spark plug and you'll see the jump as the spark jumps across. And that's how you verify that in fact you're getting spark at least to the end of the cable. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and do it to all the different leads just to make sure you're getting spark to all the different cylinders. If at this point you're getting spark across the way, the next thing you want to check is that you have uh, good spark plugs. So you want to pull the spark plugs and verify that they are in fact clean and that there's no problems, they're not cracked. Um, because if you have power going to here, it should be sparking. So when we're taking a look at spark plugs, we can pull one out here. And what you want to do is just to take a look, uh, what happens when the spark plug fires is it goes from the center bit here up to the grounding strap. Uh, and you want to make sure that it's clean, uh, it's not super oily or gross. Uh, what could happen also is that if the engine is flooded um, and then this gets all either covered in oil or gas, it won't be able to make the spark. Uh, so you can always just pull these off, clean them, make sure that there's no cracks in the insulation here. Uh, if the spark plug is cracked on the bit that goes in beside it right here, uh, the spark can ground to the side where the threads are and not in fact jump across and that'll cause a, uh, a no a no start so uh, it's always a good idea just to have some spare spark plugs lying around just that way you can verify put new spark plugs in and uh, and test that way now let's say that you have spark going to the end of the lead and your spark plugs are new or look in good condition uh, and still not firing one thing that it could be beyond that is that your timing is out uh, if your timing is out enough where it's not coinciding with the rotation of the engine uh, this will cause a no start so it'll actually be sparking um, but just not at the correct time not causing the engine to start so from there you can go onto our timing video link below and start checking for timing. Now let's say that you've tested this and there's no spark coming out of the end here. No spark. No spark. So carrying on, now that we know we have no spark coming to the end of the lead, we're just gonna follow the system back um, throughout the whole um, ignition system and verify each component one at a time. That way it's nice and logical and you're following a step and you know you didn't miss anything. So obviously if it's not coming out the end of the lead, it could possibly be the lead. You wanna take a look at the leads and make sure that there isn't any cracks in the insulation because again, the electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance and if there's a crack in the lead, it's gonna jump from the lead to the engine ground and not create a spark. 
So what we're gonna do is just pull these off, take a look at them, make sure that they look in good condition. If you're roadside, that's pretty much all you can do. If you do have a multimeter with you, you can test um, uh, continuity between the end of the lead and just make sure that there is in fact a connection. Uh, there isn't a lot of resistance in the lead. You can check that. Uh, but if they look in good condition, then the next thing we'll do is we'll go to the cap and rotor. Now on a mini, it's really easy. It's just two little clips, pop them off, and the cap will come right off like this. Now the cap uh, is the distribution device where the spark comes out of. So it goes into the distributor through the rotor. So if I pull this off right here, this is the rotor. Rotor spins around inside the cap and the spark goes from the rotor to the individual plug leads through the cap here. Now, if these are corroded, uh, it can cause a short uh, where it'll jump to, again, ground. Also, if the, um, the cap itself is cracked, sometimes the, the spark will actually jump through because this is like insulating, means plastic. It'll jump to the, uh, the engine block. So we just wanna make sure that everything looks in good condition, that this is uh, not uh, old or cracked, make sure that these are not corroded, make sure that the rotor here um, is clean and not cracked as well. And if those look good, then we can go on to the distributor. Now, if you have a point style distributor, which looks like this, you'll see this is essentially a mechanical device um, where it has a cam on the back here that opens and closes these sets of contacts right here. Now, because this is a mechanical device, it does wear, and you want to verify as you spin it around that it's opening and closing the points. Now, on this one here, uh, it's out of adjustment or it's um, uh, broken, whereas if you fact, if I turn it, you can see that these are not opening and closing. This would cause a no spark. So what you want to do is just turn it around. You can have someone push the engine and verify that in fact, when it goes over these little cams, that this is opening and closing and that these contacts here look clean um, and that there's no wires that are ripped or broken. Just kind of visually inspect it. And if in fact this looks good, then we can move on. Now, if you have a electronic ignition, pretty much there's no moving parts inside. There's just a little magnetic ring and beyond anything being cracked or broken visually, there's not a whole lot you can check roadside. Uh, you can uh, check with a, again, with a multimeter and make sure that it's uh, opening and closing continuity between the leads. Uh, but on the roadside, you're just gonna have to verify that in fact it's not broken. Um, and that's pretty much what I did when we went on our little trip there. Uh, from there, uh, you can move on to the coil. Now to check the coil, uh, what we're going to have to do is probably have something like a test light. Uh, hopefully you have one of these roadside. If not, um, you can use something like a piece of wire uh, to, that's attached to ground. Like in my case, I didn't have a test light, so I pulled one of the lights off one of my fog lights and used that as a test light. But it's always a good idea. These are really cheap. Just keep one of these with you. Really simple. Uh, what you do is you attach this end to a ground anywhere on there and then you're going to be probing around and looking for the light to turn on when there's power. Now the way that these coils work is that when you put ignition on or to the run setting, power will go to the positive side of the coil. This is the low tension side and what happens is it charges up. There's a small winding of wire that goes around the coil uh, and it creates a magnetic field. Now this is normally uh, grounded and through the distributor. Now when the distributor opens that ground, uh, the electricity, the magnetic field collapses and it creates a spark that comes out the top here of the coil and this is what sparks the engine. So when you turn the ignition system on, you wanna make sure that you have 12 volts going to the coil. If there's no 12 volts that's so going to the coil, it's never gonna spark. So that's the first thing you do, turn the ignition on and with one of these attached, go to the positive side here, make sure that the light comes on, then you know at least you have 12 volts going here. If you have 12 volts going here, you've checked everything and it's still not sparking, you're in a situation kind of like what I had. Now what you want to do from there is you want to take the positive or the negative side of the coil here, the one that's normally attached to the distributor, take that off and you're going to get a little piece of wire and you can manually uh, open and close that circuit and then you can verify that there is a spark coming out from that. So what happens is when it's grounded, there should be no spark. When you remove the line, uh, it will collapse the magnetic field and make a spark. So that's pretty much what I did. I took the main lead here that comes off of the coil, off the distributor, uh, had someone hold it right close to something grounded, and then grounding the negative side of the coil, just turning it on and off like that, uh, you can see whether or not it sparks. And we can actually demonstrate that for you on a bench 
bench to show you exactly how that works. This is the most hokey bench setup. This looks like uh, more like a torture device than something to demonstrate how to diagnose problems. Yeah, maybe we won't do it on here. We will cut to the scene in which I diagnosed it in the field. It's a little less sketchy. Like around this. Yeah, 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 it's parking. parking, yep. So that means that it's not it's the distributor. So following these basic steps, you should be able to find the, any fault that you have in your ignition system. Uh, it's a pretty simple system, and if you just take it logically and follow from the path of right from the spark plugs all the way down to the coil, uh, verifying along the way as you go, uh, it's actually not that complicated and can be done for the most part on the side of the road as well. Now, if you have any tips that you want to share on testing your ignition system, please put them in the comments. We'd like to hear that. Uh, and if you have any ideas for future videos um, that you'd like to see, uh, please ask below. Uh, we love to hear your suggestions. So we do all these videos on our own time. And if they help you out and if you like them, please consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Uh, it really helps us out. We're able to do more videos and share more content with you. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out and helps us grow our channel. And We'll see you on the next one. Tap that ass. Master mechanic over here. Have you tried hitting it yet?